the evolution of Cam as a leader uh, within not only the community, but with his teammates. How has he changed this year? Well, I mean, you can really see the progression that he's made, uh, you know, this year. And not just as a quarterback, but as a leader and, and what he's been able to do. This team, you know, the identity of this team is really, you know, predicated on, on what he's doing as that, as that guy. So um, when you start looking at all the things that he's grown and as he's grown as a quarterback, I think that's really where it starts is that the evolution of him as a pocket passer and finding a way to get it done. You know, one of the things when you look at this team, Frank, is how well-rounded they are from the run game to the pass game. But then you look at the defense, which is opportunistic and led the league in turnovers. And how good is this team? Have we been discounting it? Yeah, you know what? As as much as we talk about all the things that they've been able to accomplish with their record, I, I don't know if we're really giving them enough credit. I know the, a lot of people nationally have been talking about this game and uh, this team and, and what they've been able to do and you know a lot of the things, but when you start looking at the way they've dominated in the uh, the postseason, and, you know, beating the Seattle Seahawks, getting up to that huge lead in the first half, and then you know, kind of holding on, and then doing the same thing with the Arizona Cardinals, which a lot of people were picking to, to be better. I just don't know if, if when you start looking, I've been around this game a long time, and I've seen some really good teams, been a part of the Super Bowl, but this team right now is has a belief and a confidence about them. They've gotten better, and uh, you know they're, they're peaking at the right time, and you know, to have the type of magical season that they've had and to really do what they've been doing and doing it at the right time is what's making this team so special. Right Frank, now. do us a favor, because as we went through the um, the season here with the Carolina Panthers, there was a little trepidation, and we're guilty as well. We weren't anointing them uh, a great team, even when they were 7-0 and 8-0. and You know, we, we knew they were good. Hell, like 13-0, and we were still saying maybe they're not that good. <laughs> yeah, you know, we gave them due, but we weren't quite sure and we weren't quite sold just because the offensive weapons, you know the story. What was it like in Charlotte? When did the city actually say, man, this team can win the Super Bowl? Well, I think this, this city has kind of, you know, taken the stance, you know, as the Carolina Panthers have, is that that's against the world. If you don't like it, um, you know, you got to stop it. And, and uh, we, 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 you, sometimes you get a little, um, you know, angry about, you know, the way other people are talking about you and defensive and those types of, you know, things that uh, you hear. And, and uh, it was just, you know, this team, I think this city always had felt this, this team was pretty good. And I think it really happened after that, uh, that win versus the Seahawks early in the season when, you know, they were to go out there and, and beat them and kind of get that monkey off their back and, you know, have that feeling that we're no longer the big, the little brother. We've stepped up and we we punched the bully in the, the face. And, uh, you know, that's really where this team started feeling a lot of momentum. And the way they went out about the season each and every game in a workmanlike fashion, you know, a guy gets hurt, another guy steps up and takes over and does his job. Even in the game last night, you saw guys out there. Roman Harper goes down. Trey Boston comes in, has an interception. You know, Thomas Davis goes out. You know, uh, Jack Thompson comes in and, and makes plays. So this team has just found a way, you know, each and every, you know, game to, to figure it out and get it done. And, and they're playing great football right now. Uh, there's no question. We're talking to Frank Garcia, former Panther lineman. Uh, do you hear him on 610 WFNZ down at Charlotte with us here on Tiki and Tierney? You know, Frank, you've been in locker rooms like I have, and you know that sometimes it just takes it – that energetic, emotional uh, leader that just permeates throughout the locker room. Cam is clearly that. But give us an idea of what Ron Rivera has meant to this squad because it feels like three years ago he wanted to fire him. Now he's the he, you know he's the coach of the year. There's no other way to look at it. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it starts with him, and I think that's the job that he's done. He's done an amazing job letting these guys be who they are. Uh, you know, it's not – maybe conventional with, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have structure. We're going to be disciplined. He's made it fun for these guys. They love playing for him. And you see that in the way that he controls, you know, what takes place on the sidelines and the, and the relationships that he's built with these guys, not just as, you know, a, a coach, but as a guy that they trust and respect and they want to play for. He's done an amazing job. He, he wasn't the best, as you said, you know, starting off. I mean, he was young. He'd never done it before. But what you really give him a lot of credit for is learning on the on the fly and adjusting, and I think that's what makes you know him as a player back in the day when he played for the Bears, you know, last a long time in this league, and I think that's what right now he's doing as a coach and why he's been successful. He's learned from you know the mistakes that he's made. He's adjusted. He's taken chances, and he has the pulse of this team and the heartbeat of this team 
you know, right there at the palm of his hand. You know, Frank, it, it doesn't even matter now. I'm just curious how you would answer this. Uh, if Yesterday, was it a case of the game just getting off the rails and everything going wrong for the Cardinals and the Panthers, everything going right? Or do you think it's just a, a big time – uh, they had advantages that were inherent that they would have ex- that they would be able to exploit if they played ten more straight times. Like, you think Carolina is that much better than the Cardinals? You know, we we talk about football, as you know. It's not about necessarily your your stars, uh, you know, all the time. It's about your weaknesses and um, hiding those or covering those deficiencies up. I think the Panthers have less deficiencies than the Cardinals. I would think that they would beat them probably seventy percent of the time if they were to play ten games. So mm. seven out of ten. Um, you know, one of those type of things. But they have one guy, as we talked about earlier, that you just can't account for. I mean, he is an absolute difference maker. And when you and, and he's, a, he's a coach's dream to have to be able to use him as a weapon. Maybe the greatest weapon I've ever seen, you know, as an athlete. And, he, and, he, and he's built for that moment. He's built for this moment of the big pressure, the big stage, and he gets it done. But Cam Newton has been the difference maker for this team. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to be the difference you know, eight times, seven times out of ten in these types of games where you just can't account for him. Everything breaks down, and he runs quarterback draw or, or, or lead or power and just runs over the top of you. And then he can throw a touch pass 50 yards down the field. I mean, he just has it all right now. He's playing with great confidence. He's grown. He's matured. And this, this team isn't going anywhere for a long time.